member of the Paul Curtis, council member Rick Upper Chase, treasurer city clerk James Johnson, city manager Jonathan Delabrie, um, and DPW supervisor um, Mr. Bernier, and our zoning administrator Frank Cheney. Item on the agenda, additions, deletions to the agenda. President Fashan? No, thank you. Council Member Charbonneau? No, thank you. Council Member Curtis? No, thank you. Council Member Chase? No, thank you. Treasurer City Clerk Johnson? I've got one. Uh -huh. This came in this came in today, the one who the Wendy's on the water company. I don't know if you want to do it tonight or not. Sure. Because they want to be for this Wednesday, is that going to be a possibility for you? We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to add this very okay. well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a couple of um, edits and deletions. Agenda item number four is just a wording adjustment. It should say tax abatement and stabilization Northeast Kingdom Development Corporation discussion. And then item number six, which is the update to the policy on the administration of public records request anticipated vote is a deletion as the city attorney needs additional time. And then I have item number 12, which is the 2024-2025 uh, cash flow projection update. That's going to be a deletion. A little bit more time is needed there. Okay. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have the regular minute, meeting minutes of July 15, 2024, the payroll warrant for July 25, 2024, the counts payable warrants for July 15, 2024, July 22, 2024, July 29, 2024, August 5, 2024. And then we have liquor licenses, vendor permits, and special events permits with the one edition from uh, the treasurer to look at. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on the consent agenda before I ask for a motion to approve? What was the permit for today? Yeah, I'm going to pass that one around, but uh, just in general, any questions? Okay, so would you explain the new one that you want to? Yeah, this is from Elizabeth Gilchrist. She wants to do Wednesdays on the waterfront. She just came in this afternoon. She and paid for it, insurance and all that stuff. And I told her to see what we could do. Couldn't promise her anything. That's what it is. It's a food truck for Wednesdays on the waterfront. It's okay with me. I'd love to have information so we can follow up for Newport Downtown Development yeah. for coordination. I can do that. Are you good with that? All those in favor of approving the consent agenda say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Who made the motion? Uh, say Nobody. it. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion is carried.
Okay, the next item on the agenda is um, the tax abatement and stabilization for the North the East Kingdom Development Corporation discussion. Um, the situation has been reviewed by the president of the council and the mayor and the zoning administration, administrator and we've discussed it with our city attorneys. In uh, 2000, I believe, 2022, right? The city council approved a motion authorizing the city to allow it to use its tax stabilization policy when working with any KDC to enter into a tax stabilization agreement for its property on Fogner Drive based on its application and representation that it would create certain economic and job retention benefits for the city. Although the motion was passed, the city and NEKDC never negotiated or entered into a formal tax stabilization agreement pursuant to the aforementioned policy and no such agreement was ever approved by the council. As a result, any KDC's property taxes were never altered or adjusted and that would um, be in accordance with policy section 6C requiring the council approval for a tax stabilization and we cannot adjust the property's taxes until such time as an agreement is actually entered into and approved by the council for the next tax year, which would be from July 1, 2025 to, <coughs> pardon me, through June 30, 2026. So if any KADC has concerns regarding its current property tax obligations or an amount, it can either challenge the assessment through the tax grievance and appeal process, or it can request an abatement from the city's board of abatement. Um, it's likely too late for any KDC to challenge the property tax assessment for 2024 to 2025 tax year. However, it can request an abatement at any time. So to be entitled to an abatement, any KDC must demonstrate that it meets one of the statutory justifications for an abatement that are set out in 24 VSA section 1535. And note too, please, that abatement requests are not considered by the city council, but council members have seats on the board of abatement. And once an abatement a request is made, the board will have to set up a meeting and hearing to consider it, but that is an entirely separate process from the council and any KDCs entering into a tax stabilization agreement. Currently, thank you to the um, treasurer, he has given me the people who are on the board. And that includes the Council, Jeffrey Dunn, Ruth Ann Fletcher, Rosemary Hartley, Carl King, Pamela Ladd, Stephen Laurie, and Graydon Wilson. So those are the people on the BCA slash BTA board. Um, this time, do you want to say anything or are you good? And the council has a question about uh, what the next step is going forward. I don't see anybody from the yeah. office here. Okay. Any questions? Sure. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, what brought this to a head now? Was there a, is there a presenting issue? Have they requested the abatement already? Yeah, they request. They wanted to know about tax refunds and stuff. What I get, what I got was a phone call with uh, Richard Isabel requesting that we apply. Thank you. Hi, Frank. Rich, Rich needs to call me and said, can we have our tax stabilization? We actually called Jim's office and Jim said, come up to me. It was about a month and a half ago, Jim. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, it was, the policy was never applied. You have choices. You either uh, allow me to apply the policy based on the information from 2022, or you have them reapply at this particular point in time with the 
I would recommend that the second step probably would be most appropriate, but that's your call. Can I answer your question? Sort of. Can I keep going a little bit? Mm -hmm. This was new to me when I read the packet, and I wasn't quite sure what was going on behind it. So, if the can you describe the difference between like what's the problem with going ahead with an abatement as opposed to reapplying, so, or so is it a combination? So the stabilization is a, a a policy that's applied when there's a company that's going to produce an economic a positive economic outcome in yeah. report. Uh, and they come and there's a point system where they're scored on this point system. Mm -hmm. uh, they put an application in. That system is applied. Uh, there's a term uh, granted, uh, an agreement, or at least an award letter of some sort that stipulates, I would assume stipulates, how we're going to reduce the taxes over a three, five, or ten year period. Uh, and what their responsibilities in it are as well. Um, <laughs> That process was started. I think Chris actually made the motion. I have, I, I have the, the, the minutes. It was supposed to be applied. I found no record of any communication back and forth between the city, and that includes in Laura's records. I had Dennis do a, a full search. Uh, no communication between the city and NEK, DC during that entire period of time. So obviously the policy was not uh, instituted. That is an economic uh, relief policy. Abatement is they come in and ask Jim to reduce the taxes. Uh, they question the validity of their taxes. I doubt that that would be the case, however, Rick, because in 2020 they were reduced by 50% based on a, or they, they were overrode by 50% uh, in 2020 based on an appraisal that had been done, I think, at the time of uh, the proposed sale. So I doubt that there would be, in my view, any abatement possibility, although I don't make that decision. The board doesn't. Yes. Mm -hmm. The answer to your question, the lady from the there's only six criteria that, that they meet. I don't think this is one of them. I'd have to read them again, but I don't, I don't have to be installed under what we've got to meet this for several reasons. I look back and you had to actually explain that during that vote. Okay, so can I ask one more question? Okay. You so, can have cuts. Thank you very much. So what is the intended response? Is it to go back to them and say, we'd like you to reapply? I didn't feel like, uh, I didn't, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, that's exactly, we're going to go back and exactly what I just explained, we're going to send that message to them that says, hey, we don't have an agreement. You can come and we can negotiate. And we'd like to start over with right. that position. Thank you. Okay. Well, so we don't need to do anything. <coughs> it's just an update. This is plan. Understood. Thank you. You'll give me permission to write a letter. I do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now you're to stay. Okay. There's more. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the fiscal year 2023-2024 single audit engagement letter with an anticipated vote. So before um, we get into actually making any decisions on this, I just want everyone to know that, oh, thank you, okay, that um, a single audit is required for any non-federal entity that expends $750,000 or more in federal awards during the entity's fiscal year. It must be performed by an independent auditor and the reporting package, which includes the audit report, must be submitted to the Federal Audit Clearinghouse within 30 days after that. Um, so once we get the audit report, we're nine months from our <coughs> audit. Uh, organization's end of its fiscal year. This includes, this type of audit includes both um, financial statements and a compliance audit with federal award requirements um, for the programs that are identified as major programs. And that's based on application of a risk-based approach. And there's a criteria that's outlined. 
It's very important because this audit process, the auditors actually determine whether our organization's financial statements fairly present the financial position of the organization and whether they are presented in accordance with either GAAP or whatever um, format that we use to do our accounting. What I want everybody to understand is that the auditors are only responsible for expressing the opinion on the financial statements and the federal programs and the compliance part. So we, as management, the city manager and management, okay, they are going to be doing the work. And now a single audit's a little bit different than a regular financial audit. So this is what it's going to require. And um, it's going to require gathering and summarizing all federal grant information and it's also going to require looking at any listing numbers passed through entity names, and it's, it's a lot of work. Um, it's going to be absolutely necessary for the city to prepare the financial statements. And when I say that, I mean the auditors are not going to prepare them. The city is going to prepare the financial statements, and the city must prepare those notes to the financial statements. So I need to be comfortable and the council does because I'm going to look right now at my city manager and say, do you feel comfortable doing that? I can help you, but I'm saying to do the notes themselves because that's going to be a lot of research and a lot of updates, okay? Um, and then my other question is, I don't know if you asked for a copy of the auditor's most recent peer review. Okay. And I don't know if you asked for any disclosure of any quality control reviews of their audit work. Because as I said, this is a different type of audit, um, which would say, hey, the AICPA or whatever type of organization oversees them for these audits, it would probably be the AICPA they would have to make disclosures and they would have been back and forth and meeting certain requirements. So I know that we have the um, engagement letter here and I'm going to ask, um, please, if there can be a motion to authorize the mayor to sign the single audit engagement letter pending the mayor and city managers review of the auditing firm's latest peer review and other disclosures before we sign off on this because we really need to see who the team is going to be and that they are single auditor team. So I'd like to have that little cat in there instead of just signing off tonight. Can I have a motion? I have a motion. I have a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Comments? Just a question. Is this with the same auditing outfit that is doing the city's yearly audit? Is the, so it's the same outfit, just perhaps a different team on that? Yeah, that's what I want to find out. Okay. I want to see who the partner is, who the group is that are going to be doing the single audit versus the financial audit. And you said that this audit, this type of audit is required for because we trigger 750000 in grants, so it's a triggered order. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, as mm -hmm. usual. I have questions. Go for it. I like this. Um, You're really like becoming a counselor. I'm trying. Uh, when was the last time a single audit was, was required and taken care of? Gosh, I don't know. We haven't had one for a long time. Right? Two or three years. Yeah. Okay. And the cost, it looks like the anticipated cost would be $52,000. Can I assume that that was budgeted? No. The, where are you looking at that? Right here in this. For the single audit itself. It says fit 47000 plus an additional five for five the single audit. Five thousand. But the fee for all of the for services we'd be agreeing to right. would be right. fifty two. So what I'm asking is, right. is that 52 right. budgeted? That's right. Yeah, it was in there. It, we had the auditor's fees, et cetera. I don't know if they audit, if the budget was for the additional fine, okay. but I know they did have the, um, when Becky did it, she did turn around and say, because we anticipated the single audit when she was doing the budget, 
and we can verify that as well. And we'll go back to that. Those are my only questions. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Can I have the word, word in back? Oh, sure. Word in back. Oh, yeah, sure. The ayes have it, and the motion is carried. Okay, next item on the agenda is the DPW 2024 paving bids with an anticipated vote. I'm going to recognize Mr. Bernier. Who, who wants to speak to this? I can. Okay, sure. So, um, in the in your packet you just saw kind of the cover the spec sheet that we sent out to three paving companies uh pike Indu industries jay hutchins and graves paving and asphalt uh, linda and i opened the sealed bids this morning um, in that you will see there are six different streets uh, that we have planned for paving one of those being a class two paving grant from vtrans which is the glen road uh, portion which we have a deadline at the end of the summer to complete um, the other money and that's two, roughly two hundred thousand the other money is coming from our capital in the budget which we have two hundred and thirty five thousand listed in the capital budget uh, for street resurfacing and then 35 for three street reconstruction so there's money in the capital plus the paving grant um, certainly if some of these come over budget you know we can trim back where you know i think the paving grant we're a little stuck on because we have to spend that money by the end of this year but the others depending on price and number of roads um, we can certainly cut back but these were the three bids um, that we received they were listed on a per ton price uh, so the low bid came in at uh, Gray's Paving and Asphalt at 88.50 per ton. And we were able to touch base with them. I was. The one you have in your sheet is, does updated. Have, is the updated okay, one. Okay, good. Um, Jay Hutchins came in at second uh, with a 95.85 unit price per ton, and then Pike with 101.90 per ton. Uh, so again, those are two pavings. Part of it coming out of capital, the other portion coming from a VTrans class two paper. And do you were you able to find out the geographical scope of where these bids went? Was it just to us just locally? The, just it was not three. sent to anybody else. Or these, these three specific? These three. Correct. Okay. So was there a reason? Uh, these were the three local uh, paper. That's an it's the three local. <laughs> I see a total for the Pike and the Jay Hutchins, but I only see a cost per ton on the Grays. Am I missing something? Calculator. Yeah, I mean the total was four hundred ninety-eight thousand two fifty-five for Grays. There we go. Thank you. Yep. And the total tonnage came out to five thousand six thirty. Uh, Pike was 5628, and I did not total up the total ton of Hutchins. But I think you're. Yeah, I see it. They're very close. Yeah, thank you. Yep. And the total tonnage was 5,630. So yeah, I have a question. So I just asked that West Main Street be fixed. Yep. Potholes, right? And it was? Yep. And then I see in 2728 the capital improvement plan. Um, that's going to be ground down and redone. <coughs> We moved it up on the west. So all the sewer water connections all going to be done um, this year? 
that would be a question for Tom. Mr. Bernier? Oh, Mr. Marston? Sure. Thank you. Could you repeat the question? So my question is, um, in the 27-28 capital improvement plan, it has water connections, sewer connections being redone on West Main Street. And the question is, is that going to be done prior <coughs> to West Main being paid? It's no. no. It's just got, we're just going to overlay West Main Street. So in 27-28, it will all be dug up. Probably not. West Main Street's a bigger project than that. We have to replace the water main on West, Street, on West Main Street. So that would be, this is this is just bumping the road up. Uh, capital plan's just a plan. Uh, it could be like a truck blew up that I didn't plan to replace, so I bumped it up. Um, West Main was gonna be after Sias Avenue with the water main project for an upgrade for the to upsize the water main. Um, we haven't even got the size yet, so I don't, I can't tell you when West Main Street will. So it'll be pushed down the road. It'll be pushed down the road. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's all right. Yep. Okay. So, Mr. Bernie, who do you recommend? I'm sorry. My fault. I just couldn't hear you. That's all right. Jonathan had asked me some questions earlier too. Um, you know, on, when I saw the bids, Gray's didn't put a total on each road per tonnage. What I want to see is their per ton price. I don't want to put a ton price on a specific road because a lot of say all of them but a lot of them will try to stick to that tonnage so if you start out filling in your shims and giving it an overlay you realize well at the end of the road you're you're getting close to your tonnage they're going to thin it out and i don't want to sacrifice the quality so in the end really if we have to uh i'd end up probably skipping a road or two probably garden park obviously would probably be one of the ones that would get dropped first but to make sure the roads get a good overlay so the per ton price is the most important okay and your recommendation is Would great. Be great Thank you. Thank you. So can I have a motion to approve Gray's Paving and Asphalt Plant Inc.? So uh, thank you. Can I have a second? Second. I have a motion in a second. Comments? Yeah, uh, my comment is uh, not so much on the price, <coughs> but on the um, the way we're paving the streets. <clears throat> Let me, I'll give you a for, for example. I, I looked at the list and they were all overlayments. So we had an overlayment done on our street about two years ago. Um, the end result for me and probably 10 of my neighbors was we ended up with a lake at the end of our driveway um, <clears throat> because you're raising the road instead of grading it down. So I called Mr. Bernier and said, hey, I got a lake at the end of my road. I never had it before. He said, it's not our responsibility. Called Gray's, cost me $1,000 to <clears throat> try to get it somewhere near, but because the road was raised up so much, I still have a bit of a lake. Then I had to have a land, uh, um, not really a landscaper, but I had to have part of my lawn dug up so that I could drain off the rest of the stuff. I wasn't the only one. <clears throat> and we're two years in now, and where all the old cracks were, the new cracks are starting. So <clears throat> I think doing overlayments is like uh, putting a Band-Aid on the issue. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, um, I know you can please a lot more people by doing it because it goes a lot farther, but every one of these people on this list are going to have the same problem that we had, and you're going to have it forever and ever. It probably cost my neighbors and myself twenty to thirty thousand dollars to still have a subpar driveway 
after the city did that. I, I would have rather have the road have potholes in it than what was done. So I would like the council to revisit the mindset of doing overlayment. I think if you grind it, first of all, it only lasts eight to 10 years, depending on traffic. Um, our street has very little traffic. It's been two years, it's already starting to crack. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I know it's gonna cost more money, it'll take longer, but if you grind it down, keep it at road level, you don't cost all your residents more money every time they do something to the road. And it's gonna last 15, 20 years versus the time that it does. So I would, I would like you to revisit that. I think this would probably be a good time saying you're gonna do six of them. I know you only got X amount of dollars, but I would rather see it done right than recapping a tire. Because that's kind of what you're doing. So that's my comment. So I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion here? Yeah, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. That's what we're here that's, for. That's helpful, Charlie, because this is new to me. And I just wonder if we could ask uh, Tom to just sure. help educate me at least. I don't know about anybody else in the room Which about kind of the, the overall theory. I mean, I'm not sure that I'm prepared to reconsider all the work that's gone into this, but uh, but I think it's an important consideration yeah, in the future. Right. Yeah. So I'd just love to hear what you think about it, Tom. It's an expense to grind a road down. Certainly roads that have uh, sidewalks, you get to a certain point where you have to because you're going to lose your curb you feel. Um, it doesn't matter if I grind it down. The state does it all the time. They'll ground down two inches and put another wearing course on. And your your cracks are going to be where they are. It's the lawn. You're going to have frost, heaves, depending on what your sub-base is. And the road is, is like a concrete slab. It's going to crack. It's going to stress crack. You can't stop that. Um, so it's an added expense on roads that don't have sidewalks. The more asphalt you add to that road, the stronger that pavement is. Unfortunately, yeah, it does, it does cause a problem with, with driveways at, at, you know, at times, but we have multiple, many driveways. And, uh, again, to grind every road down and then pave it, that, that's a huge expense too. Thank you. And that's something you could all talk about in the meetings, right? Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, and the motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> Next item on the agenda. <coughs> Is the DPW income? No, it's not. It's the DPW equipment purchases anticipated vote. Okay, this one. Mr. Bernie? <coughs> so this three three piece equipment. The first one uh, was not budgeted. They, not of them, well, partially none of them were budgeted. Um, was the zero turn mower. We do have 10,000 in uh, current budget. I believe there's some in the sign. I hadn't had time to check with anybody downstairs. We're probably looking at 13 to 14,000 to buy a zero turn mower. Uh, it's the most heavily used one at Gardner Park. Um, it's a critical piece of equipment. Uh, I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. If, if I get approval, I will be sending out solicitors to bids uh, for that zero turn, it's over 10,000. Um, the next one is a uh, equipment trailer that is a critical piece of equipment for us moving the excavator around. Um, the, the frame has crack in it, we can't weld it. It's an older 1983 trailer. Um, I can, just like paving, I can jockey some funds around within my budget to make that work and still stay within our capital, capital plan. We also have a dump truck sitting on the lawn that hasn't marketed yet. Um, those funds should go right back into the public works equipment. It should help offset that. Uh, the difference from that one and, and the last one is we always split that three ways. It gets used, and probably the excavator probably gets used more for water and sewer than it does public works, but we do use it on roads. So 
Um, I did not budget it in the water and sewer. It is in my capital plan to replace um, the trailer and the truck. So the third one's a pickup. The pickup, I guess I can say to the council, we just spent over 10000 to keep uh, one of the pump trucks on the road in Bollywood. Um, that truck is cab and back body, so we're probably looking at, I'd say, 10 to 15 for a 10-year-old truck that I won't be able to inspect after February. I certainly can spend the money to repair it. I would suggest not, but that I, you know, that would be the decision of the council um, whether you want to do that. And again, with that pickup, uh, pickups all, they all get used, water, sewer, and public works, so we've always split them three ways. And I didn't budget the trailer or the truck in the water suit. If, if I remember correctly, and I might not be mistaken, but I think when we talked about the budget, you said this might come up when we were going over the budget. You said you well, were not going to budget, but you anticipated that we might have these. It, it's hard to say when a vehicle right. starts getting right. to a certain point. You know, the truck we weren't sure of, but the mechanics been looking at it usually brings it up to either goes to Ray's or Pepin's and kind of gets a, an idea of what we might be looking at, whether that truck's going to pass inspection or not. Like I said, it'll run out in February. But, uh, and then the, tra the trailer, uh, that one, nobody knew that it, it had a crack in the frame. Uh, we can't fix that. What happens to them when you're done with them? If you get, you know, the scrap metal. Scrap. It's a 1983. Yeah, it's lived its useful. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm any of course. So, Tom, I'm just want, I want to make sure I understand what we're being asked. Sure. Are you suggesting that we need to actually buy a replacement trailer at this time? And again, and the same thing on the truck? We Correct. should go ahead and just replace Correct. them? The trailer, we've been looking at different trailers. Um, our current design of trailer, which we found some around here the same way. If you're familiar with a equipment trailer, a lot of the back um, uh, tracks that you walk up on flip over, and yep. they're all metal. You've got metal lags on, a tra on an excavator. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, we'd like to buy one like we did our other smaller one for the paving, the skid steer on the roller where you unpin it and the whole deck tips and it comes up and it tips back on. It's just a safer design. They are a bit more expensive, but uh, safety-wise, I would prefer to go that route, especially if we have to move that piece of equipment in the wintertime. Um, and the truck, too. The truck, last truck was bought, <coughs> was, I think, around high 40s, 50,000. So if you want to invest 10 or 15,000 into a, a 10, 11-year-old truck, then you might gain couple, three years body out of it. Again, we can do that, uh, but I'd suggest the opposite of That's the council's decision. So what exactly is the motion that we're going to be looking well, here? Is it to approve for three new purchases? Correct. I guess then the question I would have is how much how much we're talking about like are we approving the purchase at this point and you, you just go do it? Or are we saying, we'd like you to investigate and get bids and you'll bring Well, I'm going to get bids. So, so, we'll be so I'll get bids for the zero turn. Uh, we're kind of jockeying yeah. equipment around right now because, as I said, we, we got some tentative prices. They're going to be around thirteen to 14000 yep. so they're over the ten. So uh, same with the trailer. The trailer, we're looking at twenty to twenty-five, and the truck's probably forty-five to fifty. Okay. So yes, I would be getting bids. Coming back to the city council for approval. Thank you. So instead of wasting everybody's time and my own, I this is ask how you what way you want me to go. So it'll be for the bids. <coughs> I'd like to hear what the motion might be. Well, Chris is ready. Our president is ready to go for us. Uh, I make a motion to prove that Tom go search out for bids for the uh, X Mark Zero Turn new trailer as possibly the truck. 
I have a motion and second and comments. Yes, I have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that you haven't budgeted in water and sewer uh, to buy these um, pieces of equipment. Where is the money coming from uh, to buy the equipment? All is it all coming from the general fund? No, they they the. Um the truck and the trailer would get split three ways. So general fund, water and sewer, and water and sewer, as I put in my memo, I would offset in other areas in water and sewer to offset those costs. And it was an unanticipated that, you know, I mean, uh, the trailer was obvious once we realized it had a crack in the frame. You didn't, you didn't see it coming. Same with the truck, thinking February, we're, we're all set. We should be able to get another year out of it, and we weren't going to get another year. So. Okay, and, and then a second question with regard to that is um, you, you just sort of um, arbitrarily, uh, that may not talk, be a talk, fair word. Talk to me. I, I, I'm I, sorry. It's a, uh, you put down that each um, fund, the water fund, the sewer fund, and the general fund uh, should be paying a third, a third, a third. Um, do, do you have any uh, data to support the fact that that's the way it's used? Well, if it came down to the trailer, quite honestly, I could justify saying it should go 50-50 to go water and sewer, but um, it does get used, to, you know, at times with the uh, roads, maybe some, some uh, culverts or something like that, but the most use the excavator gets is water and sewer. Insane, insane, insane with the pickup. My, my salary split three ways. The pickups get used water, sewer, and public works. If you looked at the overall cost of what my general fund for public works is to the sewer fund to the water, um, they're, they're pretty comparable in cost. If you're asking me to track every hour that we run this piece of equipment, that'd be, uh, that'd be a tough task. So I think right now it's an estimate based on that wasn't allocated, it wasn't budgeted, and Mr. Burning is trying to figure out the basis of his use. So he's saying, okay, logically, I'm using this amount every time in each category. So instead of saying 50% or 100%, he's going to split it across the board. And then as we get more close to getting the new numbers in the budget, we'll be able to do adjustments. Because right now, I think that um, the key is we don't have accurate numbers, right? and we're still working on that. And we have that on the agenda tonight that we're working on that. So I think fairly, it, that's a fair estimate to say best to divide it across. Doesn't mean it's necessarily going to end up there, but right now, 30, 30, 30 is safer than 50 or 75, and just pulling that. And, and is that correct? Is that yeah. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Oops. What? The motion is carried. Okay, next is the DPW in kind grant timeline and update, please. Who's going to run with that? Thank you for doing this. Yeah, so I, I was asked to meet with Tom and figure out what projects we have currently remaining that the Department of Public Works has committed to. Um, so we can get a, an idea of what in-kind labor we have outstanding um, so that f if future projects come up, we can you know talk about time commitments. Um, so there's currently only two projects that Public Works is currently operating on. Um, the first one is Gardner Park. So this, uh, as the council knows, has been the remediation with stone environmental of the soil, capping that soil, replacing it with new soil, and then installing new playground equipment. Um, so the remediation piece of it has been completed, and now we're just working on streetscapes, so sidewalk, the pathway through the park, installing pedestals and concrete bases for that new playground equipment, um, so the playground equipment, uh, Tom and the Department of Public Works plan to start next week with 
that streetscaping and the sidewalks. Um, there's a lot of layout with all of the different equipment and, and pedestals. Um, and that we're anticipating, we would like to say that it would be open this fall, but in reality we are in August right now, so I would assume fully open uh, spring of 25. We'll try to open it up as we can as things are ready. But um, So that's that project. Uh, the second project the Public Works have committed to is the Causeway. This is the Northern Borders grant that we have to replace lighting um, at the East Main Street, the I-91, and Gardner Park intersections. Um, the hope is that uh, Department of Public Works will install road sleeves um, before the asphalt plant closes for this evening, or for the season so that we can repave. Um, and then there will be 15 light pole bases to be installed once uh, the city receives them. So those are the two current ongoing projects. Uh, the only other one that we have committed is a grants and aid project for next year. We have signed uh, an agreement saying that we will commit our public works to that, but we don't have a project necessarily identified um, for that next summer. Were you able to t look at the labor that was going to be assigned? How many people for each grant? That's what I kind Not of Not necessarily to exactly how many people, but I don't know the number of people. So the I know for the Gardner Park, it was like 800000 I believe, in, in kind. And Mike Welch, who was managing the grant, had a list of that that we've submitted to the granting agencies that lists you know, the, the amount of the grant and of what we've committed on an in-kind um, that, that Mike Welch was managing. So there is a dollar amount associated, but I don't necessarily know like how many people, how many days, but there is a specific dollar amount that was submitted in those grants. Is my concern, my question for this was, I know Mr. Bernier says often, and probably rightfully so, that he may need additional labor. And that's what I'm trying to find out, is if we're doing these in-kind grants and he has to commit labor, does he have enough labor? How do we know? How is it figured out? That's what I want to know. I think that would be a Tom question. Well, we don't have to answer it right now, but I'm just saying that's kind of, if you, well, if you want to answer it, you can. Well, when Jonathan asked me about putting a timeline on any project for that matter, it's, that's, it's, it's tough. Um, Gardner Park, the playground, I've never built a playground before. And so if you look at all the equipment that is stored at the wastewater plant, it's, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so it's going to be time consuming. Um, so to be fair to myself and whatever might come up that we have to take care of something might break that we're tied up for two three weeks. Uh, I told Jonathan spring of 25 would be realistic to say we'll be ready for it. I'd love to say I'll have it ready for this fall, but I, I can't promise that. It's, it's hard. It's not like this is our only, um, we're set on a job and here's your only job. I could probably put a timeline on it. That's a tough one. And the causeway, I still don't, I still haven't even ordered the concrete pedestals. So I'll be coming, I believe I'll be coming back to you uh, for approval to order from two different companies. Um, I, I believe it'll be over the $10,000. I just got the threaded rod. They don't supply certain materials that go in the concrete pedestals. The conduit, the, the threaded rods, you have to order all that. Um, so the timing of everything's been, been tough. But I am hoping that we can have a lot of the groundwork done because the contract is planning on coming in spring next year. They might even come this year to set their concrete pedestals for the mass tires, but they haven't submitted a design for it yet, so I'm kind of guessing it. would be really late. <coughs> so. Okay, but you'll kind of keep that on your radar. Mm -hmm. because. Well, I, Jonathan, I've talked about that. We, yeah, I, I love, doing, I love doing grants, but if we're going to do grants, and we've already got two that I haven't even finished yet, mm -hmm. we may want to look at whether we apply for another grant to either hire it out, bid it out, or, or something. I'm not I, saying I don't want to do the work. It's just we can only do so much. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. So if you could put that in your discussions when you have your yep. leadership meetings or have a radio to review. I really would like to 
get a better future sure. for that. Because as we all know, grants have a timeline. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, next item is the authorization to have council conduct a tax sale with an anticipated vote. Sure. So last week, uh, myself, Jim, and Robin met with uh, David Rue to go over the new um, tax sale process that statute laid out. Um, and then basically have the council give them the go ahead to start that process. There was a couple differences this year, so if we can't go out for abatements on 23, 24 taxes, it has to be older than that. So we talked about certain nuances that you know we have to follow as part of the delinquent tax process. Um, for utility bills, we have to do water shutoffs before we can collect on those which the city of Newport has never done before. So a couple different nuances that, that we're playing with, but this is really um, to then kick it over to Greta uh, to that, get them started on the process. So can, can I get clarity of what exactly are we gonna be asked to vote upon? To have uh, the, our attorney start the tax sale process which is not tied to a particular property. It's all about the process that we will follow in general. That's correct. So it'd be all delinquent taxes Understood. older than one year old and whatever process they have. So the motion would be for your city attorneys. Understood. Thank you. Attorney. I understand it. Okay. Somebody want to give me a motion? Yeah. I'll move that uh, we approve asking our attorneys to move ahead with creating the process for what's the final moving language? Forward. Moving, moving forward. forward. The tax sale process. The tax sale process. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion and second. Comments? I just have one question. Um, I'm going to speak through you. But it's directed, yeah, I just want it's it. It's directed towards John. It's okay. I just so when he was discussing the shutting off of the water and sewer, I'm assuming that there's going to be a procedure that comes first to make sure the residents are not still in the property before the water and sewer shut off? I just didn't So my understanding is, my understanding is they can still be in the property. Notice. But notice. notice. So I know when I was with the City of Burlington Water Department, <coughs> there's three notices um, with different colors that indicated how late the delinquent notice was, and the last notice was a red notice, and if you got that, your water was shut off. Um, so but, there, we have to figure out- So we'll, we'll get a process yeah, a in process. place, so I'm not gonna let anybody just yes. shut off. And, and that I understand is. that, the health officer would need to be so, brought something to that, probably, yeah, okay. Yep. Right. You're gonna have people dump the sewage in your backyard. Right, so we'll definitely, it's yep. not, yeah, it'll be under control. Yep. And, Right now, our health officers are there. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yes. What was the motion? <laughs> Do you like me to, you sure, go ahead. The motion is. The motion is to approve the attorneys moving ahead with authorize the city attorney. Authorizing the city attorneys to move ahead with the tax sale, sale yeah. process. Mm -hmm. I would prefer more language because we have two attorneys. Okay, is going to be S what's their S -B name? SB and F is their new name. I consider that a friendly amendment. So we a friendly amendment. Friendly amendment to the name of the firm. Um, David Rue's firm, okay. which is SB and F. Well, they changed their name. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Okay, next item is the USDA Community Facilities Grant Public Meeting for Fiscal Year 24 Radios and Water Rescue Equipment. Okay, so we were contacted by NBDA um, that stated they had some leftover money in this pot that was just going to go back to the federal government if municipalities didn't apply for it. Um, I said, okay, uh, put my fire chief hat on, 
and said, well, there, there is some equipment that, that we need that we could use. Um, so there was a very quick turnaround. We had two days to get an application together. Um, and part of that was submitting an application that will give you a punch list of items that we have to then complete by this Wednesday. One of them was a public hearing for this grant that we were lucky enough to tie into this meeting. So the grant is for radios, um, 10 portable radios, 10 pagers, and a mobile apparatus radio, and then water rescue equipment to outfit 10 firefighters um, in water rescue gear. Um, so this is a 35%, so it's actually disappointing to hear. So 10 years ago, in the past 10 years, this grant was based, it's based on the census. So we were in a different threshold where this grant covered 55%. As of the 2020 census, Newport is actually the poverty level has decreased, income has increased, and we're now at 35% for the next 10 years in this program. So uh, it's 35% funded. Uh, we have a total ask of the equipment of $56,000 between the two. And so it would be a grant request from rural development for 19,600. Uh, the remaining would be a combination of the fire department operating budget and some of our capital funds uh, for equipment to cover the, the additional costs. Um, they had asked about training and, and other requirements. So we, this Newport City was awarded a Vermont Fire Academy program later this summer for a water rescue and boat operations program. So this ties very nicely into that. We really have the training schedule free of charge. Um, so this is just, it's, it's a public meeting is what it's um, for. Um, and then certified minutes of that meeting just need to be provided to you as well. So again, just a, a mix of radio and pager equipment and then um, enough equipment to outfit 10 firefighters with water rescue. So 19.6. That is correct. Okay. 35% of the Yep. I think so. And you're comfortable with the monies on the capital fund side? We have that. Is there an 885 yeah, right. sitting in our equipment fund? I imagine we'll use roughly half of the funds from our operating and then half of the funds from our equipment. Okay. So what exactly is it you need to prove? So we just need to hold a public just meeting. Hold the meeting. We're holding a public agenda item. Okay. So if, if the, Before Wednesday? No, I mean this is the this is, this the, is oh, that okay. item. Okay, got yeah. it. We just did it. Yeah. So I don't know if the council has questions or if you wanted to open it up to the public if they have questions. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I just, that's why I wanted to know exactly. Yes. This, this will qualify. This will qualify. Okay. Yep. Okay. They just said there needed to be an agenda in minutes, whether it was a separate meeting or tagged on to another meeting. And I mentioned <coughs> to David that we were having a council meeting on Monday and we said include it. So. I'm going to throw it out there since we don't need a motion anyway in case anybody has any questions. Could you just identify yourself, come up and identify yourself? Sure. Please? Thank you. I'm Ann Cheryl, and I always have questions. <laughs> um, so I didn't hear you say, these 10 things, or 10 radio things, or 10 water whatever things, are things that we desperately need. And these are the things that we need more than we need other things. Or I didn't hear you say, we really only need five of them, but I'd rather spend the rest of the money on some other thing. So I, I just like to know, yeah. I mean, you know, if somebody came along and offered me, uh, you know, a Mercedes Benz, I would say I would like, yeah, sure. But, you know, I really only need what I've got. I don't need that much. So I'm asking you, do you need it? Am I okay to respond? Please do. Okay. So I'll start with water rescue and, and move back over to the equipment. So currently the city of Newport has zero capabilities for water rescue. Um, all we have is ice water rescue, which should not be operated uh, in anything other than ice. And so I would say currently we have zero capabilities for any water rescue that doesn't involve ice. So desperately needed. Um, the equipment piece, we only have one radio left in stock. 
Um, so we, we plan to order 10 more, um, and we currently have one pager left in stock of the older model. Um, so we are running out of our supply, um, and then if things break, we don't have any others to issue to members. So I would say this is critical equipment. Uh, radios and pagers are how we get notified that there is an emergency. So for our, our membership to be able to have this advance warning notification from dispatch to be able to say, hey, we have a call, please respond to the station, it is really critical for our overall operations. And all the new equipment is compatible. It is, and, is and things aren't getting cheaper. I mean, each you know portable radio is three thousand um, dollars. You know, a set of uh, bunker gear now for a firefighter is roughly six thousand dollars to outfit them. So um, things are not decreasing in cost, and they're only increasing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, 12 is gone. Next item on the agenda are the water sewer audit of the time cards. An update, please. Okay. So I did. My, my, all right. So I did an audit um, from when I started back in March to current. And I, I need the council's help on this. Um, so, for per, I found percentages that are listed that we are applying to salaries and time cards. So currently we have four members of the wastewater and water department uh, that allocate 100% of their time to water and sewer. So these are the four employees down the bottom. Uh, the other person that applies percentages to their time is Tom as Department of Public Works Director, which he does, as he had mentioned this evening, he splits it three ways. So 34% into the general fund for public works, and then 33 for water, and 33 for sewer. The other three people that do percentages is Jim's office downstairs, and they are all at 12 and a half for water and 12 and a half for sewer, so a combined of 25 uh, for each one of those employees. Those are the only employees that are using a percentage base per their time. Where I need the city council's help is this is as far as I can go as the city manager because the time isn't <coughs> broken down per department. So for example, Jim, I'm just gonna pick on you because I'm looking at you across the table. So Jim works eight hours a day, 25% um, of that, so two hours of Jim's eight hours is allotted to water sewer, but in that eight hour chunk, it's only listed for eight hours working today. Same with Tom, um, same with Stacy and Robin, where the time isn't broken apart. So to do an audit, we need to separate all of it. Exactly. That's what this was supposed to be. Correct. But, was but no person, but no employee that has percentage-based time is separating their time. But that was what they were supposed to do. We know that. And the right. key is that from that point in time, yep. they were supposed to start tracking. Gee, from nine to ten, I was doing this. From ten to eleven, I was doing this. From eleven to eleven fifteen, I was doing this. Yep. That's what I need. Okay. I need actual numbers during that period of time so we can test it to see if those percentages are better. So I need the council to ask all of those employees. We have. So I need all of those employees to listen okay. to the city manager and make sure it happens. Okay. Can I respond on my on our behalf? I don't know. <laughs> Should we go? Come on. I, I think it's, it's highly unfeasible for me to do it downstairs hours because we're answering phones all day long. Mm -hmm. And if somebody calls in one of those about to catch it in the sewer on a two minute phone call. I'm not concerned about I, that. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned that if you're sitting down and you're spending X amount of time calculating something, that you track that. Okay? I'm well, concerned if you're that, doing a that's mail. That's a different story. Yeah. But we've, got to, we've got to track every phone call, every realtor that comes in and asks you questions. That's an impossibility. Yeah. I mean, we're billing for water and sewer. Yeah. 
when you spend a day building the water, you can put it on the hour. But if that's what you're doing. I just uh, need okay, to know who's, do, who's the doing call what. And the in-person conversation no. is not possible. What I, but what is possible is if, say, one of your appointed officials sits down and says, I'm working on this project, and this is what I'm doing, it's very easy to keep that time. Yeah, I mean, if they're spending two or three hours on something. Yeah, even if they're spending okay. half hour, they could figure that out. We I need to get these numbers. My my Four assumption, yeah, my assumption is that your department is probably under uh, on the percentages. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we need to know. We need to actually find out. So, okay. thank you. Crack down. Thank, thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. Don't crack on me too hard. Yes, of course. So the one I didn't hear in that list is the city manager position. So my time is not being allocated by percentages it's only actual hours being worked. And you're at this point you can track how many hours are going toward water and yeah, separate on, separated on my time card. Okay, so I'm just gonna blurt out the question that comes to mind, okay. which is the conversation that was going on during my uh, campaign for election to the office was that an inappropriate amount of the former city manager's salary was being allocated to water and sewer. So I guess I want I'd like to know it, what that, what that, I'm not even so really so concerned about what was going on two years ago or a year ago as I am about what's going on now and how we're actually allocating your salary, the city, the city manager's salary in general, because I really have no idea. Like I, I couldn't tell you how much of an average day or week you might spend in that area. So that, that interests me. I'm under 5%. That's quite a lot. Okay. But that's the purpose. Right, it's so I, that's what I, because I didn't hear it in the list, I wanted to make sure that we were, we were to the list. Oh, like yeah, it. absolutely. Yes, I want um, the comptroller in there. I want the zoning administrator in there. I want everything. Even if there's no percentage? Yeah. Okay. I want to know who's spending what amount of time so we can figure it out. And if I could add one more thing. I don't think, I, I at least am not feeling the need for attorney-style six-minute increments in how we, how we estimate our time, I think, you know, responding to some of Jim's question. But I do think it's totally reasonable to be able to keep a little piece of paper on which you keep track of your half-hour day, half-hour increments of time, that then get just kind of aggregated. I, that's what I think yes, we're looking that's for. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. I think that. Well, I guess I, I thought it was only a percentage basis, so I'm trying to figure no, out. No, I want everybody's time. I want your time. So do you just want copies of the time cards? I but guess you I'm don't keep it time. So if, in other words, if you and I are sitting down and we are working together on a specific project and we're done in a half hour, track. What I'm tracking, I guess I'm confused. Because I'm putting like Well, I can sit with you. I can sit with you during the week and we can go through all this sure. so we don't need to sit here with it with everybody right now. And I will show you how to do that. And but the bottom line is I want real time for people oh. to do it in the work. So what I'm gonna do if, if we're working on a specific problem or building something like that, I'll track that. Right. Uh, the, the, income, the small things I'm not gonna bother. Right. Because it's Unless it turns big. Huh? <laughs> Unless it turns big. Oh, I won't. Yeah, so right now, I'm gonna, it, there's no motion or anything before. We know what we need to do. I will sit down and we'll clarify it and I'll work with you to make sure we do this, but we do need to have this real time going forward. Okay? Okay, next item. Uh, real estate litigation potential executive session one VSA three one three A two. to find the premature public general knowledge of the confidential attorney-client communications made for providing legal services to the city council will place the city at a substantial disadvantage 
because disclosure of the otherwise confidential advice and communication would harm the city by waiving the city's attorney client privilege 1 VSA section 313 A1F. So moved. The motion, do you have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Motion is carried. May I have a motion to enter executive session to discuss confidential attorney client communications for the purpose of providing professional legal services and for discussing real estate litigation in accordance with 1 VSA 313A2. And I would invite the city manager and the zoning administrator into the executive session. I have a motion to have a second. second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, and we are in executive session. Okay, we're out of executive session. No action was taken. Next item on the agenda evaluation of an employee in our potential executive session. One VSA 313 A1B in F. May I have a motion, please, to find the premature public knowledge of confidential attorney client communications made, please, made for pro providing legal services to the city council, confidential pending civil litigation, which the public body is a party regarding uh, labor relations agreements with employees will place the city at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing the city's negotiation strategies and priorities and would waive the city's attorney-client privilege and prematurely disclose the city's legal strategies. So moved. The motion to have second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, the motion is carried. May I have a motion to enter executive session to discuss confidential attorney-client communications and go forward for the purpose of providing professional services related to negotiating a labor relations agreement and for the discussion of pending civil litigation pursuant to 1 VSA 313A1BENF and to later potentially invite in specific employees. So I have a motion, do I have a second? A second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Motion is carried and we are in executive session. We are out of executive session. No action is taken. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. All right, Jim. Yeah. I move that we authorize the mayor to sign a settlement agreement with the union to continue to negotiate with the union on a separate matter and to select an arbitrator if necessary. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. <laughs> Eyes have it, and the motion is carried. Next item is comments by members of the public. Um, and I know it's getting late, so please remember, <coughs> remember please, when you're recognized, speak through the mayor. Um, members of the audience are reminded that members of the press are present and that these proceedings are being recorded for current and future broadcast over the city's cable television channel. Members of the audience are further reminded that Newport City Council meetings are for the purpose of allowing council members to conduct city business. City council meetings are the only time the city council discusses, deliberates, and decides upon city matters. City council meetings are held in public to promote transparency and accountability in government, but are distinct from public hearings or town meetings and that they are not meetings of the public. <coughs> Members of the public shall be afforded a reasonable opportunity to express opinions about matters considered by the City Council, to conduct orderly and efficient meetings that kindly request the public's cooperation and compliance with the published guidelines when participating in the meeting. Thank you. When your name is called, please speak into the mic 
Facebook microphone, state your name, residence, and affiliation. And please. <coughs> Ms. Bureau. Hi, Jennifer Beerling, resident of Newport, Vermont. I got two quick things. One was um, Jonathan's report about how he is accounting or expensing his hours. Um, I literally almost came out of my skin <laughs> in the back because the first thing that came to my mind was if you're not following the historical percentage division, the issue is I believe it was the historical, sorry, I believe it was the historical percentage division that was used in the setting of the budget. And so if it's not being expensed in that manner, then if it's only 5% in water and sewer, you're going to have a deficit in your water and sewer budget because it's not being expensed that way. And we already have a problem going on there, and so this really needed to be a forward-looking operation and the budget needed to be accounting for it um, which did not happen um, and so here we are and I just don't want to see an already bad problem be exacerbated by the current method of expensing so just be alerted to that fact um, and then at the risk of sounding like a broken record personnel policy still not on the agenda we really deserve I mean, our non-union employees really deserve that respect, and it's got to stop. This That's kicking the can, can down the road and kicking the can down the road has got to stop. So have a special meeting. That was the vote that took place at the June 17th meeting, but if it wasn't on the agenda by July 15th that a special meeting would be held <coughs> specifically to reconsider that personnel policy from a standpoint of the evaluation process, the grievance process, and the overtime accounting. Make it happen. They deserve this respect. They deserve this support. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Time for bed. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> the fact that the um, Northeast Kingdom Development Corporations um, came up for tax, the concept of tax abatement um, is interesting to me, um, especially since they got a unique special uh, grant from the state for $1.3 million. And when you think about grant money, you think, oh, you think maybe it's coming from the state. Well, where does the grant money really come from? If it comes federally or through the state, it's coming from the individual taxpayers. So now, to um, allow them, uh, I love that term, to allow them uh, to abate their taxes, um, where we wind up paying. We, the citizens, are going to wind up paying, and we've already paid $1.3 million, uh, not only the city, but the state. Uh, citizens all over the state have paid already to the Northeast Kingdom Development Corporation, and now they're going to come in and ask for tax stabilization. Well, that means that maybe their taxes get reduced but that means all of our taxes get raised to pay the excess over that period of five years. And what did they do in the first two years of having that money from the state? I don't think they've done very much at all. Have they even paid their taxes? And if they haven't paid their taxes, well, that's a place that we could maybe uh, use our, where, where, did, where is that part where we were going to actually um, have a, a tax sale? <laughs> we could own that property. Wouldn't that be nice? And maybe that could start us on uh, a new path. So I'm not anxious that they should receive any tax stabilization. And uh, please look at the history of how they got their money 
and decide whether or not they should have that special dispensation from us. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Ms. Black? I was going to be the history part of this. However, if there's going to be a meeting and the Board of Civil Authority will be involved in that, then I can save it for that and save everybody's time and energy. Is that going to happen? All right. I'll go to bed with Charlie. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. I'm Adam, I can't, can't call on you because you have to sign up ahead of time for the... <laughs> can I go on the last thing? Ms. Hopkins? Yes, thank you. Um, my question was sort of asked before, but I'll ask it again. What has happened to the discussion of the personnel policies? And that's just the point I wanted to make. It needs to be discussed. It was voted to be discussed. It should be discussed. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next item on the agenda is new business. President Sean? No, thank you. Council Member Charbonneau? No, thank you. Council Member Curtis? No, thanks. Council Member of the Chase? No, thank you. Treasurer? I have none. Manager? Okay, I have um, a couple. So uh, there was a Purple Heart ceremony on Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning at the gym. Thank you, city manager, for putting that together. Okay, so everybody, come on out. There's going to be a community forum on August 15th at Gateway. The city manager is now finalizing the agenda and the panel for us. And this was President Vachon's. Um, specific request and I appreciate that and I thank you for that and it's on August 15th Thursday what time? it's what? 6 o'clock I think right? Mike booked the gateway at 5 5 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> it's 5 o'clock um, and so that is going to be on the environmental issues and then there will be more specific when we get to that okay should have an agenda by Friday <laughs> Next item on the agenda is old business. President Fashan? Nothing. Council Member Charbonneau? Yes. Just to reiterate what's been said, mm -hmm. have a public comment. The personnel policy. I know that uh, Rick had mentioned that a few meetings back, setting a hard deadline of July 15th. Uh, nothing was said, but we did mention at that meeting that we needed to keep it in our, our minds. It's the time is coming to set either a special meeting or put it on the agenda. Thank you. We're going to get it done. Council Member Curtis? Are you going to address this in your open question? Okay. Um, where am I now? Old business. So yes, the personnel policy, we're almost get, got all the information we needed. We're still waiting on check, check a couple of little bit. we we'll check on, make sure we have everything that we need. And so then we can deal with that. But right now we just need to go back and make sure that everybody has everything that they need. Okay. Next item on the agenda is um, set the next meeting, regularly scheduled. Sorry, yeah, sorry, did I not call you? You did, but you missed three others. <laughs> <laughs> did I miss three others? Yes, and I quickly thank <laughs> This is a great opening. Thank you. <laughs> Um, actually, I just do have one quick thing that's a point of information for you all. Oh, let me recognize you. Thank you. Would Go. you please? <laughs> Can I just consider myself yes, recognized? Recognize. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that the DHB contract, the folks who are working on the Enhanced Master Plan, is moving along. 
they are about to embark on a series of things that will involve public engagement. I don't have that all finalized, but the one part of it I know to be real is that they're hoping to come with a near final draft for the council's consideration and feedback at the, eight, at the September 16th meeting. And I did confirm, Madam Mayor, that okay. that will work for them. They'll be coming in by Zoom for that meeting. So we can count on that report back. And there will be other engagements by the community between now and then as a part of their process. Well done. Thank you. Maybe the Nope. I was the only one who was deeply. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda. <laughs> Can we set the regularly scheduled council meeting for August 19, 2024? Do I have a motion? Second. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it, and the motion is carried. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn uh, the regular meeting at 8.42 p.m.?